Bob, did you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Verification of the meeting. This meeting has been posted. Attendance roll call. Mr. Buckmaster. Here. Mr. Bowman. Mr. Strong. Here. Here. Mr. Ward. Here. Mr. Schrader. Here. Mr. Kapalski. Here. We are all here. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor of the agenda presented, state aye. 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 Opposed? That is approved. Number two, consent agenda. A motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any items need separate discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda, state aye. 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 Opposed? Brings us to superintendent's report. Yeah, I just have one item this evening. Um, actually, two, I'm sorry. Um, first, um, I'd like to recognize Ryan. Um, I'd like to recognize Ryan's service to the board last year. Actually, we're turning this into a roast. <laughs> <laughs> I got some good pictures. <laughs> the Mesquite Gold Norway School Board hereby commands Ryan. All right, I'll uh, actually get what he said. Mesquite <laughs> <laughs> for his service to the school board as student council representative during the 2013 2014 school year. The board thanks Ryan for regularly attending school board meetings to represent the students of Muskego High School. In this role, Ryan has, has capably and thoroughly reported student activities, events, community service projects, and has acted as a liaison to the student body on behalf of the Muskego Norway School Board. Ryan has served responsibly and effectively by demonstrating exceptional leadership and knowledge while giving willingly of his personal time to re represent his fellow classmates. The Muskego Norway School Board hereby commends Ryan for his outstanding service and wishes him well in his future academic and career endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really enjoyed your reports each um, board meeting. Really, you did a wonderful job. Um, you were succinct, entertaining, um, had a great sense of humor. So, we're going to miss you very much. So, thank you for serving. Thank you. Okay, and our other superintendent report is actually Dr. Ted Getterman will provide an update to the board um, with his role as uh, principal services, student services, and assessment coordinator, our director for our district. So, thank you. Thank yes. you. I'm excited to talk a little bit about um, what's going on with assessment and student services. Uh, being respectful of time, I re there are really so many different areas that could be covered, but I'm going to talk about two two primary things that we're focused on. The first being our shared leadership initiative and the second being some assessment changes that, are, that will be happening at the high school. So first, um, I want to start with the shared leadership. Uh, this past year, I identified eight different areas that we really, that I felt like we really needed to focus on as a district and then and ask pupil services team members if they would be, uh, if they would either lead one of these groups or be a team member of one of these groups. And it was really born out of two um, Two needs. One was just from a very practical standpoint, and the other was a, is a philosophical thing for me. Can I just step in for just one yeah. second? I'm sorry. Now, this there is a document in your um, board docs. Is there a way to get oh, that up on here? Um, or, I don't know. Be too lengthy. Is it too lengthy? Okay. I think the point would be that you review that well. Right. I mean, so there's, so I've provided some examples okay. of the process of okay, sure. another example of product. Okay. So I'll, I'll kind it. of talk about this. Sure. Before. Okay. So um, as you're as you're probably aware, over the last couple of years, my um, roles and responsibilities within the district have expanded, and it's been a really it's been a great thing. Um, but 
When I first started four years ago as an administrator in the district, I was really um, exclusively focused on student services. So psychologists, social workers, counselors, uh, the nurses, and our at-risk programming. And a couple of years ago, um, RTI was added as one of the areas of focus. And then this past year, assessment. And so, um, and they have been they have been great additions. And frankly, um, really exciting work for me, and also work that I'm really appreciative to be uh, given the opportunity to work on because I know how critical it is for the uh, for our district. But it all does take time. And so, from a practical standpoint. Um, I really needed our pupil services team to take some leadership roles and rather than having everything filtered through me. Uh, the other part is philosophical and it's more important to me, frankly. I've been the beneficiary of, I've been in education for 20 years and so I've had um, the good fortune to be surrounded by leaders who have taken time, who have given generously of their time to me um, and have encouraged me to step up, um, to take some chances, to make some mistakes. I took them up on the making mistakes part um, often enough. Uh, and then to learn from those mistakes. And so I really wanted to uh, provide a similar opportunity for pupil services staff because I see part of my role is helping them to also be leaders within our districts. Uh, and I wasn't sure how they would respond to this kind of initiative because it's in addition to what they currently are doing. But they were actually very excited about it because they were areas that um, really allowed them to get in, to lead, and areas that were passionate for them because they had the opportunity to choose. So the areas that I chose, I chose because I felt as though the district could use a little bit more clarity, um, a K-12 vision, and people who had some specific expertise in these different areas. So when I wanted to build some um, expertise within our, within our department in these areas. So the areas that we focused on are mental health, suicide prevention and intervention, AODA, homeless, community outreach, bullying, Positive behaviors, uh, positive behavior interventions and supports, or PBIS, and functional behavioral assessment and <coughs> intervention plans, or FBAs and BIPs. So in the packet, um, there's a number of different documents. Um, there, one set of documents um, gives an example of our process. So there's one that, that looks at our mental health process, the process that team went through. And we utilize the PDSA uh, format. So the P, I mean, it's really looking at the plan. Um, what is the rationale? For, I mean, why are we going to study this area? What is the data that we have to back up why it's important? How is it aligned to our district mission and vision? Uh, do is really the specifics in terms of who's going to be responsible, what are we going to do, by when, and how do we know if we've reached our goals. Um, study focuses on analyzing the data. So for everything that we do, we collect data. And the uh, study phase gives us an opportunity to kind of look at the results of our work and make a determination of you know, was it, was it successful? Was it not successful? What would we do differently? And then ACT finally are those recommendations for next steps. Would we do the same thing again? Would we just completely trash it and start over? Um, what, how would we proceed if we were to move forward? Um, you know, what's interesting is I only ask teams to, to do the, the plan and maybe some of the do. So just, just to kind of start, you know, biting off a piece of these really large areas. But in every case, um, our teams went through a plan, do, study, and some of them even got to the ACT phase. So, uh, and I think that's really a tribute to the kind of people that they are. Um, yeah, and I'm just so thrilled to work with them. So are there any questions about the, the process that we went through? Try to be very methodical, try to use data, try to really study what we're doing, analyze the results, and come back around it again. Since we've been through PDSA. So the second example, um, there's a number of documents that have to do with our FBA BIP. And so just to give a little background, and this is kind of an example of a product. So all of our groups have different kinds of products. Uh, this group had, well, just to give you a little bit of a background, functional behavioral assessments are assessments that we um, complete for students, uh, most often in special education with severe behavior problems. And so FBA really studies why the behaviors are occurring, and a BIP is a plan that we use to um, replace the problematic behaviors with more adaptive behaviors. So this team, when you take a look at what the teams did, this team created a completely new process for our district, and really a truly outstanding process, then developed a training protocol for all special ed teachers, then trained all of our special ed teachers, um, and then analyzed the results of the process and the, and the quality of the plans that were written and made recommendations for how we come around it again next year. So it's just one of the one example of uh, some of the great work that's been done. Um, with our shared leadership teams, they're going to continue next year. 
uh, we're looking at maybe contracting a couple of the groups where there are enough commonalities where it makes sense to do so. Uh, but we're going to definitely continue the work. And um, you know, it was great last week we met as a group to talk about uh, as a whole group so that they could share the different projects that they've been working on over the course of the year. And it was really exciting to see the different work that had been done by these really hardworking teams. So are there any questions about shared leadership? It's been a big, big push, uh, and I've been just delighted with how people have uh, taken that responsibility on and moved forward with it. Questions? All right. So assessment. So as all of you are likely familiar uh, from different presentations we've done, response to intervention has uh, three major components. Within each component, there's roughly one million minor components, but three major ones. Uh, universal screening is one of the components, and that is a process by which we screen all students in the district to uh, take a look at whether or not they could use some additional support. Um, and this is done by use of standardized tests, but also teams of teachers and, and um, pupil services staff coming together trying to make a really thoughtful decision. The second piece has to do with interventions, and that's the curriculum, um, the approaches that we take to really intervene on behalf of those students who demonstrate that, they, that there's a need. And finally, progress monitoring, and that's the approach that we use to regularly and frequently come back around and check to see, are the interventions that we're delivering having any impact, or are they not? And if they're not, obviously, um, you take a look at why they're not and, and try to examine and get to root cause so we can um, meet the students' needs. So lots has changed. Lots of lots of things have changed in RTI because it, it has come uh, at the state level together very quickly. Uh, one of the things that's changed are just the quality of the tools. Uh, companies have been coming out of the woodwork to try to um, get better tools on the market because there's just such a need for it. And one of the um, one of the pieces that hadn't been available was the opportunity to have a universal screening test, which also did progress monitoring. So right now we have one set, you know, one assessment that is for universal screening and another completely different assessment that has to do with progress monitoring. Um, and with our current scheduled rollout, Discovery Ed would be replacing math at the high school starting in the 2015-16 school year. So we're just kind of looking ahead. Um, but as RTI has evolved, the tools have gotten better and we've gotten better clarity on what we need as a district from these tools. So with this in mind, I was approached by uh, Christy Brooks and by Jen Plitzwhite um, from the high school, and they proposed uh, that we transition earlier than the 2015 school year, and rather than moving just from math to discovery ed, that we consider uh, transitioning to STAR assessment instead. So we did some study of STAR assessment, we had them come in, and what we found was um, that this would be a cost-neutral change for us, that um, STAR has exceptional statistical reliability and validity, so we can feel very confident in the decisions that we make based on the data that we get from them. Um, STAR is different than any other assessment available right now in that it combines a universal screener with a progress monitoring tool. So instead of trying to teach um, teachers two completely different assessment systems with two different databases and all of these differences, we have one assessment system, um, and frankly, we'd only be paying for one, too, as well. Uh, STAR provides excellent reports for screening, for diagnostic reports, and instructional planning. Um, it was recently purchased by Google, actually. And so Google is going to be linking a lot of their apps with STAR apps, which is going to be great for us being a Google district. Um, and also, they're linking with the ACT suite, which is, as you, as you know, is part of the all-new um, state assessment system. So I think this is a really, it's a great opportunity for our high school. It is coming at a perfect time, since we haven't transitioned to Discovery yet yet. Um, it's very relevant for them because it provides a, a greater level, a greater amount of information in their uh, progress monitoring than they would have been able to get with the different system. Um, and it allows us to move our timetable actually up a year. So teachers are going to get the data that they need actually a year quicker than they would have with our original timetable. So it's really exciting. I know I'm going to go through a lot of information here, but I know it's a long night. Are there any questions about um, that thought and the, and the plan to move to start? It's just a great great opportunity and I really appreciate the high school staff too for bringing it forward because ultimately it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of work and training on their part as well but they were they see the use of the data and they're excited about it. Is it, it so with, oh, the next student tested in STAR? 
that's similar to MAP. So it's three times a year. Okay. There's a fall, a mid-year, and a spring. That's just that's for the benchmark testing. Uh, but for students who are then in intervention, they can be given bi-weekly progress monitoring. And this is just at the high school? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Same subject matter as that MAP test. Yep. On the core line, all that good stuff. What's, what is uh, a little bit different is all online, uh, which means that we get all of our reports immediately from them. Uh, we've had, uh, MAP has been just a, a train wreck the last, well, this past year in particular, but even the year before we had trouble with it as well. So transitioning away from it sooner than later is wonderful as far as I'm concerned. And do you see some longevity as far as you can tell with DAR? I do. I do. I think it's right now it's best in class in terms of reliability and validity. Um, They've got a ton, I mean, they're aligned with Google now, so they've got plenty of money. Um, more districts in the state are, have been jumping onto it. In fact, um, in a recent meeting I went to for educator effectiveness, uh, STAR was actually the, the assessment that they used as the exemplar. So I think, um, you know, they're moving to it as well. So, yeah, I, I definitely think that there will be some longevity with it. Wasn't that long ago that MAP was something? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. All right. Well, that's all I've got for, for tonight. But, you know, as always, thank you very much for allowing me to serve. Mosquito's a great place to be in. We've got some very exciting things happening, so I'm really looking forward to our upcoming years. Thank you very thank much. You thank you. Thank Thanks, Ted. That ends the superintendent's report. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to our reports, <coughs> president's report. Um, don't really have a report, but I do want to thank Ryan for um, all the enthusiasm and energy that you bring to your position. Um, your reports are informative, uh, entertaining. You can tell you spent you, you don't just throw them together. You spend a lot of time on them, and we appreciate that. Your uh, soccer reports were by far the best. We've ever got. Uh, as you walked us through that uh, that journey to the state championship last year was rather exciting. It felt like I was there. It's just reading your reports, reading your reports but. Did a wonderful job, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best going forward. It's going to be an exciting uh, time in your life, and uh, take it in and enjoy it. Thank you. Um, Laura is always the most well dressed person here. <laughs> <laughs> Not a real high bar. <laughs> Board member reports. Anyone? Hearing none? Uh, Business Services Committee? Yes, we met this evening. Uh, in attendance uh, were Jean, Bob, I was there, Rick, you joined us a little bit later, Dr. Thompson, and uh, Julie, who uh, provided the summary of our agenda items. We went through two agenda items this evening, uh, a health insurance consultant recommendation that um, we talked about. Uh, there's uh, materials online to review for that particular <laughs> issue. Um, do you want me to go through it? Do you want me to wait till next time? Okay. <laughs> it's going to be an action item next time around. I would just encourage board members to read what was posted with that. And therefore, if you have any questions or things that you would like Julie to bring back by the next time for an action, please uh, contact her to do so. And the second item was uh, liability and workers' comp um, bids that went out. That also will, also will be an action item. Um, and Julie will post a link for that. So the same kind of thing, take a look at it. It's a, basically, it'll be like a spreadsheet of information. What else? Wait, of course, <laughs> Excel, it's Excel, it'll look great. Um, and same thing, if you have questions or you want something brought back, it'll be action the next meeting. And the committee thus far um, concurs in what is being recommended, recommended by administration. Thank you very much. Educational Services Committee. We did meet this evening. Uh, in attendance for myself, Brett, and Chris, Lisa Sapago, Michelle Schwab, and the two math coaches from Bay Lane and Lake Danoon. And we spoke about middle level mathematics resource recommendation, which they did make a recommendation, uh, which you will see June 16th. And uh, we are in agreement that it is the uh, direction we should move, so there will be more information in your packet for June 16th. Thank you. Student representation. All right. First of all, I'd like to thank all the members and all those who sat on the board this year for making it such a welcoming 
humbling experience for me. When I first got the job, I was a little wary because I had soccer practice on Friday nights. So I was like, I was a little kind of offset because I wasn't sure which meant more these or the uh, soccer practices. But after the first meeting, I knew that it was right that I should come here because it's just an awesome experience to sit in on all these meetings and it's really truly been a life-changing experience for me. So thank you. Well, unlike Hugh Jackman and Les Mis, we have eight more days, not just one. But it feels like 50, because as each and every student can attest, as each day passes, the next gains five hours, because Mother Nature and the Sun seem to tantalize us and coordinate <coughs> incessantly. However, this didn't deter a group of AD psychology students. Eleven of Ms. Pine's AD psychology students have qualified for the Academic Achievement, Achievement in Psychology Award. This honor is presented by the APA, the American Psychological Association, of which Ms. Pine is a member. At least two students from each of her classes qualified for this national award. They are as follows. In hour one, Caitlin Schmidt and Emma Schnitka. In hour two, Ellen Kirk, Michelle Marsalek, and Stacey Stefanowski. In hour four, Daniel Matusnik and Sarah Stenton. In hour five, Stephanie Hyde and Jenna Schneider. And in hour seven, Eric Boysen and Ashley Weber. Congrats. Also, the Midnight Men are making their final appearance of the year. The concert will be held in the PAC this Thursday on June 5th at 7 p.m. Admission is free, and a big sale will be held following the concert with proceeds going to the American Cancer Society. For sports, the varsity softball team is the 2014 Classic 8 Conference Champs. On Friday, the varsity squad defeated Waukesha North 2-0 to capture the conference title. Haley Blount picked up the win, that being her 24th of the season, and also hit a home run, which happened to be, which happened, which happened to be the game-winning RBI. She was backed by the rest of the team playing outstanding defense to get the shutout. Congrats to the seniors, Haley Blount, Brianna Witter, Tanya Hammett, Rachel Lenting, and Sarah Vogel. The juniors, Annika Graves, Jenna Clockell, Lizzie Turp, Delaney O'Keefe, and Casey Holtman. And the sophomores, Mary Holterman, Christy Joukowsky, and Ashley Mormolder. The Warriors will take their 25-3 record to Union Grove tomorrow at 4.30 in the WIA sectional semifinal. The boys' baseball season is just underway, and they already have a record of 4-2 with wins coming against Waukesha South, Waukesha West, Ike, and West Dallas Hill. Their next game was scheduled for today, but I don't quite know if it was still held with all the it was reasons for it. But it was canceled. Oh. After a rough end to the regular season for the girls' soccer team with three straight losses to Catholic Memorial, Waukesha West, and Homestead, girls will face off against Milwaukee, Pulaski, Arts, and Juno in their regional <coughs> semifinal game this Thursday. Also this last week, the one doubles team of Ben Zielkowski and Josh Taylor qualified for the state doubles tennis tournament. After competing at subsectionals and sectionals last week and Thursday, last week Tuesday and Thursday, Ben and Josh were given the 11th seed in the tournament of 64 doubles pairs. The state tournament takes place this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Good luck, guys. Also, congratulations to the boys track and field team for qualifying 17 athletes to the WIAA state championship. Leading the way for the Warriors and Sessionals was Alex Hockey for the first place finish from the shot put and a second place finish in the discus. Also taking second place were Alex Erickson in the third 200 meter run and Matt Little, Keith Kamer, Cameron Gavich, and Noah Karras in the 4x2 relay. Taking third and getting the final qualification spot for state were Mitch Kwapik in the 1600 meter run and the 3200, Justin Jesuit in the discus, Connor Eisenhower in the 800, Matt Little, Noah Karras, Cameron Gavich, and Jake Koyak in the 4x1 relay and Ethan Kern, Alex Erickson, Tom Reisenauer, and Mitch Kwapik in the 4x8 relay. Also congratulations to Joey Precop, Dan Matusnik, Josh Beeson, Jake Bourbonnet, Grant McGro, and Paul Rapp who are qualifying as relay alternates. The girls, track team, the girls track and field team is also sending a multitude of girls to the WIA state championship this Friday and Saturday. The qualifiers are the 4x8, the 4x4, the 4x2, and the 4x1 relays. At sectionals, the 4x1 team involving Brianna Fry, Anna Egan, Taylor Tabbert, and Jericho Katarik also set a new school record. Katarik also qualified for state in the long jump and the triple jump. Joining them are Georgia Yamas in the 1600, Jenna Letterman in the 800, and Laura Kudranowicz Kudranowic in the shot club. Good luck to all track athletes this weekend. And that concludes my report. Do you have any more questions? <laughs> Are you going to introduce your replacement? This will be the student council school board representative for next year. This is Kaylee Creed.
Hi. Hi, Kayla. Hi. Well, hello. <laughs> Would you like to step up and tell us a little about this? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am Shaylee Reed, and I'm a junior now. I will be a senior, and I work at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I really don't do much. I really love student council, and I'm really excited to be a school board representative. I can't wait to dress up. <laughs> um, I'm just like Ryan. He said he would borrow me his suit. So <laughs> I think I'll pass on the packet square and we forgot his was pretty sad. But um, that's about it. I'm just excited to be here next year. So how do how do they pick who's gonna be the wrap up? Uh, so that is so the person who misses a meeting or <laughs> no. they just kicked him off the that. like, that 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 That's done by the officers of next year's student council. Okay. Right. Well welcome. I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs> All right, moving on with uh, resolution action items. Our first item is transportation renewal. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed one. <laughs> Going back to reports, public forum. Does anyone wish to address the school board this time? <laughs> Come forward and state your name and address. Right, so just anyone in general? Uh, what? Just anyone in general? Yes. You could just start off with your name and address, though. You can just take an area. There you go. Hello, my name is Magic Drena. Some of you may know me. It's the car accident girl from a couple of years ago. So, and I am here to vote for the art room, for Ms. McCarthy's art room. And it has recently come to my attention that, that Ms. McCarthy's art room has been considered like nothing's final yet, but it is a mere possibility that this room would be demolished to make room for a new weight room, seeing as it always needs to be relocated. But I believe that, first of all, the school has more than enough, in my opinion, um, places for sports and not nearly enough for creative-based activities such as art. And Ms. McCarthy's art room over the years has just been a place where kids, where they knew they were safe. The kids could come in there, they knew they wouldn't be judged, they could talk to Ms. McCarthy about anything, and just kind of like, like I think was mentioned before, kind of a, for students' mental health, a necessity for some kids. And I just feel that I believe the plan would be to combine for them, Ms. McCarthy and Mr. Player to teach in the same room. So we'd go from having two art rooms to only one. And I believe that's ridiculous. Seeing as there's already more than enough space in our school to exercise. And that's really not our primary concern. And I believe that Ms. McCarthy's art room, it fosters creativity, it promotes divergent thinking, and I believe those are assets to success of Muskego High School students. That's all. Oh, are there any questions?
<laughs> well, because it's public forum, we're not allowed to interact with you. We can we can take your message and uh, actually we can follow up with you as far as what we plan. I do have your email. Oh. Since you were <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah, please, many of you do. But I can give you just some clarity. It isn't a, a shared classroom that's being looked at. Um, it is just um, moving one classroom into the other. There's only there isn't going to be a shared classroom. So I want you to, there aren't going to be two teachers in the classroom. Okay. So I can't so interact any more than that, but I just wanted to yeah, share. Yeah, no, may I ask a question about can't, that? Yeah. Uh, would then Mr. Clear teach somewhere else? He's, He's retiring. Oh, yeah. so we would only have one. one right. Our teacher, Ms. Right. Kiel, his school. All right, well, okay, thank yeah. you. Sure, that sure. That provides clarity yes. to me. Yeah, thank you. Are there any other, well, if I can't. Yeah, we can't really yeah, interact yeah. with this part of the meeting. That's all right. That's all right. But thank you, Maddie. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else like to wish to address the court? Well, state your name and address, please. And just for clarity, just so everyone knows that this part of because of open meetings laws, we can't have an interaction with you. If it's something that we are discussing later on the agenda, you can fill out a form, and then then we can interact with you in that part of the bit. But if it's not something that's on the agenda, we can um, listen to you. And if it's something that would uh, merit follow up, we can do so later. Okay. All right. Um, my name is Ben Angst. Um, I'm a tenth grader over at the high school, and I'm also here for the same exact thing that Maddie wanted to talk about. But I am also here to state. Um, voice my opinion and others' opinions who couldn't make it tonight. So I wrote uh, a note that I would like you guys to hear, and then I have some quotes from other people, their opinions and their feelings on the uh, demoing of the room. So sometimes it's easy to diminish something when you're ignorant of those who it would affect, but most of the t and most of the time it's hard to understand and recognize everyone's situation, especially with a large group of people like Mosquito High School. But what I ask is that you would take into consideration that this type of project would affect every single student one way or another because of how art rooms, how, the art, how these art rooms will or have impacted students' lives. I may have only been at Muskego for just under two years so far, but that does not mean I have not been affected by Muskego's art program. I care greatly for the, for the classes, teachers, and other students involved. This year I took drawing and painting, therefore being given the opportunity to paint a mural on the wall. I was very excited to begin putting my per own personal footprint on this school. But now hearing that there's a possibility that my project would be painted over and used for a weight room makes me very upset and let alone disappointed for those in favor in, th in this decision. Like I said, I care so much for the art program, so therefore I wish other people's voices to be heard. So these are some quotes that other people wanted me to speak tonight because they knew I was coming. Renee Engels, a 10th grader, um, said, doing this would be a waste of your guys' resor art resources and supplies that you have supplied us with over the past years, and it's kind of just kind of all going to waste because we put it into the walls and into the room, and now it's going to be painted over. Um, an anonymous 10th grader said, there's a short story behind every mural, every stain, and every piece, and you're taking that away from that room when you turn it into something else. Um, an anonymous 11th grader said, you're taking a fully equipped room for an educational purpose and reducing it to something um, non-educational, so to speak. And um, she didn't really feel very greatly about that. She had some very strong opinions. Um, Tiffany Frank, a 12th grader, said, I understand some students feel they need a weight room, but why would you take away something from other students for it? And this kind of shows what some people's priorities are in the school. And an anonymous 12th grader said, brought up a very, very good point that I also enjoy, is that room 141, Ms. McCarthy's art room, is the only art room with wheelchair accessible doors and sinks. So for those students who wish to do other arts and crafts that need to wash their hands or get into the room, it, uh, she has double doors, and Mr. Pleer's room does not. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I can clarify part of it. We did discuss um, this subject earlier at a uh, committee of whole meeting, which is just a smaller meeting right before this. Um, we, the, at least I specifically did ask that we make sure that the students' art needs are going to be taken into consideration. This will be an action item at our next board meeting, so if it's something you guys would want to come and talk, 
that's a part of it. If you fill out a card, you can actually we can have discussions back and forth, unlike we can do here. Uh, but we are um, aware of the uh, accessibility and everything else, and uh, those items are, at least in my, what I've been told, are supposed to be made whole in whatever we do going forward. So the needs of the art um, department and students are not just being overlooked and cast aside. It's something we are all uh, we're aware of, and hopefully with good planning, we'll be able to meet both needs going forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to address the board at this time? Hearing none. Resolution action items, transportation. Okay. <coughs> um, I'll read the motion. Uh, <laughs> motion to approve a two-year renewal with Lamers for transportation services. So moved. Second. All right. Discussion? We brought these forward um, to our last board meeting, and there's just some clarifying information regarding uh, the difference between the one and the two-year. We're right, recommending the two year. Right. Um, we'll save about twelve thousand dollars per year, about twelve thousand five hundred per year with going with a two year. Board policy requires us to go out for bid after six years of service. So if we do the two year, then at the end of that two year contract, we would go out for bid automatically. Okay. Any other questions? Julian, on this. Um, Sorry, something just popped up here and it kind of took me out. Sure. I was a little bit premature. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the, um, I believe in the original contract there was a, a provision for uh, gas prices. There was yeah. a, a, a built in provision for uh -huh. where gas prices would be. And that would continue. Be. That would continue? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It would continue as it is written? As it is written. Yeah, correct. Okay. Any other questions for Julian? If not, um, please hold. I lost my connection. Tony. Take your time. Yeah, you, you may have to. Cause yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, if you can get it done in the next three minutes, these guys before they leave probably want to know what the final outcome. Yeah, because they're leaving at eight thirty. No pressure or anything. I'll tell them three. They have a good four and a half there. So, 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 right right so, so transportation marine oh. renewal, but okay. Well, you put the yes vote. Yeah, good. All right, fine. So here. I don't know. Not. Ah, there it is. There you go. Okay, perfect. You did good. Oh, and then that's there you go. Good one. Okay. Sure. All right, moving forward. Uh, item 5B, food service management company contract. Motion to approve Tahir as the district's food service management company for 2014-2015 with the option for annual renewal not to exceed four additional years as discussed in closed session. So move. Second. Discussion? Uh, yep. We have okay. what we discussed in the closed session or hearing none. Lisa Carraro is here from Taffer. Um, if there were any specific questions. Otherwise she just wanted to say hello to the board. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity opportunity to serve you for another five years and uh, we look forward to um, to continuing your service and I'm very excited and just want to thank you very, very much. So I've been involved with Mosquito the entire, or entire time for the last 11 years. So um, from, uh, from when I had just started with the company, uh, I'm in my 15th year. And so the way I kind of grew up, you know, in this area and in my role as the district manager. So I just wanted to thank you again for um, uh, voting us. <laughs> <laughs> And for the students that are here, as part of this uh, approval, we are going to be giving some more flexibility on the type of food you're going to be getting. So, especially those at the high school, I think you'll enjoy seeing some of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, why don't you leave if you have any suggestions? <laughs>
in the online for you is the clean copy of the handbook that was presented on the 19th and there have been no changes um, after the May 19th meeting. This is second reading, correct? It's third. It's third. third reading? Final. Yeah. Oh. Questions? Hearing none? No, I'm going to... Just in the uh, going forward, um, I think for items like this, we can still vote electronically, but I'm going to do it locally as well so we can continue on and not wait for it to pop up. Continue on to me, it makes sense. So, um, we can just want to finish up for the next item, we can do it that way. Then. Unless we have specific roll call requests, just do a verbal and electronic. Okay. Makes sense. If you do that, I can mark it unanimous. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Is approved. Um, 5D, OT and PT annual services contract renewal. Motion to approve renewal of the following services contract for the 2014-2015 school year. BH therapy services up to 30 hours per week, occupational therapy services at a cost of $50 per hour. DP OT services up to 35 hours per week, physical therapy services at a cost of $43 per hour. So moved. Second. There's no change to this contract. Um, we've been contracting with both of these services for many, many years. Um, there's no increase in hourly rate. Any questions on what this is? Or I think the motion is reversed. Are you going to be a Yes. The motion is. How much is that? The motion is. Yeah, then it's. Okay. The motion should be. Okay. So is that a motion to amend? Yes. Yes. Second to Bob's amendment. Second. Discussion on the amendment. First, we're going to vote on the uh, amendment. All those in favor of Bob's amendment, state aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Any other questions? Thank you. Those, um, the final vote on the motion as amended. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved. Okay, moving on to discussion items. Number
number 6A, Random Drug Testing, Parent and Student Survey Results. So we have um, in your packet um, the results of the parent and the, the student <coughs> results. The students, we had 146 respond and as far as um, the intention to participate in co-curricular activities, 82% um, indicated that they would be. Uh, the opinion regarding uh, random drug testing, as far as support, it was about, it was support to neutral uh, was the majority, but there were more major, uh, neutral students, it was 39% were neutral about um, the random drug testing for uh, students uh, with the, the co-curricular and athletics. Um, the question about believing if random drug testing would act as a deterrent, 73% um, said it would act as a deterrent. Um, with regard to um, are there additional measures that would be needed beyond what, what's been offered, students responded with no. Um, the students who responded to the open-ended question overwhelmingly uh, talked about uh, random drug testing for the entire population, which, again, as we discussed in work sessions and on previous occasions, that is not, you know, due to privacy rights, uh, that is not an option for public schools. Um, that's why it's, it's, it's when there's a, a privileged opportunity, such as a co-curricular and athletic event, that's when we can uh, look to random randomly um, drug test students, so that's not an option for us. Um, the next question about um, random drug testing um, would influence the decision of whether or not to participate in co-curriculars or athletics. Overwhelmingly, 86% said no, it would not deter them from uh, participating. And the last, um, with regard to students who attend school events, if they, if uh, students knew of other students who were under the influence of alcohol or drugs, and 75% had indicated no, they were not aware. Moving to parents, we had a, a strong response. We had 508 parents respond. Uh, when we look at support and strongly support, we had 89% of parents indicating that um, they, they had a positive opinion about random drug testing Muskego High School students involved in co-curricular activities and athletics. Uh, as far as it being a deterrent, 82% of the parents indicated it would be. 71% supported the $10 increase in activities fees. Um, with regard to additional um, service, uh, different additional measures that the district could take. It was kind of split. 56 said yes, there could be, and 44 said no. Um, of the 236 respondents who uh, responded to that open-ended question, the parents, overwhelmingly similar to the students, um, there was indication that we should be testing all students rather than, or the entire population, rather than just um, the students who are involved in those co-curricular athletics. And again, that isn't something that we can do um, given the privacy rights and, um, you know, we, we can only choose those that are, it's a, a privilege for students to participate in. The second highest uh, indicator for parents were to increase student education opportunities, including, uh, and so what fell underneath this would be speakers um, having, you know, for instance, um, recovering addicts, um, health classes have more opportunities uh, have the DARE program uh, involved in more than just fifth grade. Other programs such as peer-to-peer -peer programs, um, SRO, police presentations, things like that. Uh, the third highest was um, parent aspect. And this went kind of all over the board with regard to making sure that we have a task force, which we do, uh, with the city and police department um, and parents. Um, and also students also uh, participate in the task force. Um, but the comments related to the parent aspect also had uh, comments related to that it is the parent's responsibility that um, uh, what's, what's going on off campus, you know, those were the types of uh, comments about parents, but also that there would be some forums and educational, additional forums and educational opportunities for parents. And lastly, uh, canine searches, there were comments about canine searches, either frequency or um, additional. So that was the survey uh, for question four. With regard to uh, 
their child participating in co-curricular activities. Um, 86 or almost 87 percent who responded to the survey, 87 percent of them um, did have their child participate in uh, a co-curricular athletic. Um, and would it influence your child's decision to participate if we did the random drug testing? Uh, 93, 94 um, percent of the parents indicated it would not influence um, the decision of their child to participate. So those are the results. The one that surprised me the most was the, uh, under the student responses, the last question. Uh, are you aware of an MHS student who attended a school event, football game, dance, etc., under the influence of drugs and alcohol? And almost 75% said no, which kind of surprised me. But I would have thought that would have been higher that they would have witnessed someone throughout the years. I, how are the students? Contacted um, with regards to the survey through what means? Ryan, how were the students given the list? Okay. I see him. Their parents all received the So there was no. So there was the 146 kids that took the survey. Their parents, in theory, all 146 of those parents could have also taken the survey. There was no. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Otherwise, Fanny, did you want to say something? I just wanted to say, um, yes, I have, like, I personally never was aware of any survey being given out. I love taking surveys. <laughs> <laughs> but I was never been aware of anything okay. like that. So, just in case, if you want to, like, make that more, like, Put a posters or something, I don't know. Like, make kids more aware. Of the but, yeah, yeah. Thank Increase you. a lot more. Yeah. Now, when we say, go to her point, so does it just go to their email address, or how does how, how are these sent out, right? To the students. I mean, does this just go to their check to see if it comes directly to their Steve Norway email address? Um, or their, um, yeah, it has to check if you heard Deanna. Yeah. Okay. So some students might not check that okay. account. Or it could be a okay. I I know for a fact, but like I share one, I share one. I never have a separate account, so it's just like me and my brother. So it's not like my parents' account. I, I never leave really the messages or anything. <laughs> I know it's yeah, and I really have a feeling that no other kids do either. Thank you. All right. And the student ones just went to the high school, unlike the parent one, which went to the eighth graders in the middle schools as well, right? It went to the sixth grade parents in the middle school as well. So they went there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Any questions, surprises, or anything? I think it's the most fresh mind before the survey came out as I expected it to. Nope. Right. Where are we going from here? That was just for informational purposes. You know, we had asked to um, you know, survey the community, find out what they felt, and I guess we could use that information for the next agenda item. Just a policy. You know, hearing no discussion on this, we're going to move on. To the next agenda item still deals with this topic. Um, it has to do, uh, well, the next agenda item on here is the random drug testing for the high school participants in athletics and co-curriculars policy and administrative guidelines. First reading. Well, actually, uh, what we did is we looked at current policy that's out there, and to be honest, in Wisconsin, not, there's not a lot. Um, we also looked uh, with Neola, who uh, the only um, policy that they had for us to consider was from Indiana. So um, this, this, the policy draft and the guidelines are um, drafts that we took uh, language 
verbatim really from uh, both Arrowhead and from Pewaukee. Now they have different staff and so as we look at this and we continue to um, you know determine the, the like selection of students and things like that, we, we will likely uh, be changing some of this or you know having some conversation at the high school about um, some specific components. So if I so for instance, I would change right away under student absences during uh, testing date. Um, we, we forgot a sentence in there. So I'll be adding that for the next time. Um, but essentially, this is what we've talked about over the last you know, several months about what this program could look like in Muskego, Norway. Um, it's about contracting out with a, with a uh, service that would support our needs in this area. We would have um, a testing coordinator who would support the district's end of it. Um, and the policy and the uh, guidelines uh, speak to the eligibility for testing, uh, what specifically is tested, how students are selected, um, how the tests are administered, and what happens if students are absent. And then what happens once, you know, how do we notify students and uh, parents about the testing results. So those are all bulleted out and, um, you know, mirrors what we have talked about. Can I get some clarification on a couple of items? Absolutely. Um, propose or I, uh, proposes or I word under the guidelines here that we have in front sure. of us. Mm -hmm which mine is trying to open up for the last couple of minutes. But anyway, um, on the eligibility time frame, I'd like some clarification. Um, so a student becomes eligible to be tested when they return the, the form that says they're going to participate in, in a sport. Mm -hmm. So if... Or extracurricular. Or, or extracurricular, I'm sorry. Um, so if boys tennis, which is a spring sport, they that's their only extracurricular that they participate in. So they go through the whole school year and are not eligible to be in the pool until boys tennis season starts. Is that the way I read that? For their first year, but then after that... Well, that's my second yeah. point. Yeah, so if they don't if, say baseball, which is even later than that. If that's their first sport as a freshman, okay. and they have not participated in anything else, they would not fill out any of those forms or fees until that season. Okay. So they would not be part of that. The second point to that, to my question then is, let's say a, a freshman boy participates in football, that's a, obviously a fall sport, and then decides he doesn't want to participate in sports sports again or an extracurricular again. So for the next four years that child is still in the pool? Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, that'd be true. Can we do that? Sure, because oh. they, can refuse, they, can, they can refuse testing. And that, all that does is if they do go back into the sport, they would get the, by refusing testing, it's just, it, my, my understanding is the same. It's similar to a DUI, you get the same punishment as you would as if you test positive. But if you so, you're you're in this you're you're in the uh, pool for football. You go out for football with your freshman year. Uh, you decide after the season I'm not doing this anymore. You're still in the pool, but you have no intention of uh, participating in sports anymore. Your name gets pulled. You say no. The consequence for doing that is you don't get to play football for a <laughs> season. Well, you don't really care because you're not going to be playing football for that season anymore. And 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 that's how I read this. But I'm wondering if we can do that because I understand. Why is not being able to test every child mm -hmm. because of, of the privilege of an extracurricular? But under that scenario, if the kid is a junior or a senior, they're not participating. They're just like every other kid and that's they, not participating. They, they Can I finish? Sure. They're just like every kid who is not participating in the co-curricular. So if we can't test those kids, why can we test this kid who two or three years before was in a co-curricular? What makes them any different than the, than the student body that's not participating in co-curriculars? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because they can say no, and there's no consequence to it. And they have a history of participating. We're not forcing them to go into it. 
they have the option. And the only consequence for saying no is they can't participate in the, the extracurricular by saying no. Can they, on your point, please freshman football from besides not for me, not going to play, I'm not going to be in any other co-curriculars the rest of my high school career. They kind of know that. Can they opt out at that point? That's our policy. They, they can just decline it because they, they don't want to have the test. But to all of you know the comments that you're making, we have not had our attorney look at this. Now, you know, I'm sure the other school districts had, but I could bring that specific question to him if we are moving in that direction. And <coughs> because someone may want to opt out after they decide not to play football because they would rather opt out and then opt back in if they decide to take band or choir their sophomore year but didn't think they were going to, instead of having a refusal lead to what? Not being able to go out for choir? Or, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. But shouldn't they be? Yeah. Because then are they avoiding in order for... I mean, it sounds like a loophole then. Well, they would go back in it at the point that they sign up for a, a different extracurricular. Couldn't anybody do that then? Yeah. You know, after every season, they could opt out and decide what they're going to So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, I think the problem would be what if you opt out, you, you refuse a test, because there's always a possibility you never get tested and you can easily opt back in. No. But then you want to go out for the but then you want to go out for the other other sport or other activity. But it, it does. you refuse to test. But it, it does make it makes right. sense to no. stay in it because what we're trying to do is we're trying to randomly test not just during the season. Right. So you don't want kids opting in at the start of football, opting out, right. opting in at tar at track, opting out. Yeah. Because you're, you're trying to you're trying to. Well, you know, they honestly wanted to opt out, and now they honestly want to get back in because maybe they're not sports sports oriented, but maybe they're more the artistic, you know, music, choir, whatever. But then they just say no and take the consequence or participate. Yeah. But that means they wouldn't be eligible until the next testing day, according to the policy. So what's the consequence? The consequence were one at a time. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, yeah. Hold on, sorry. Uh, if they were uh, refused to test already. So, for example, my daughter, she went out for a sport and said, I don't want to do it. Her name came up, she refused. Then she went out for choir the next year. But she she wouldn't be able to. She wouldn't be able to go out for choir. Well, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. yeah. That's true. We said band. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Well, if she went out for something else, she wouldn't be eligible until the next testing day, in which case she'd automatically go in. Right. So I think we have a little well, gray area there. Go on. What was your point? Thank you. My point was, what under that scenario, what's the consequences, and then she can't go out for band? No, she can go out, mm -hmm. but if she's in it, gets w w under which scenario? The one where you opt out? I don't think we should allow them to opt out. Actually. No, I, I don't think we should. Because I think if they if they're adamant about not I'm not going to be participating anymore. When you, if you get pulled for it, just say no. My whole point by bringing this up is partially devil's advocate. I think the way this is written right, right now needs to have this discussion and sure. scenarios. Yep. I'm not advocating for one way or the other. And I don't want you to point pin that on me. Oh, no. I'm advocating that we need to have some more discussion on this the way it's written now because I can see a loophole or I can see some scenarios where we have some unintended consequences. Sure. That was a great point. And that's why we have three readings. So we work our way through this. So possibly the solution is they are allowed to, if they, that scenario took place, they could participate, but would automatically have to be tested if they previously opted out. No, I don't think they'll opt out. I don't think you do. They can. If they refuse, but then they can refuse. But then they can't participate until the next test. No, no, they can participate if they opt. Okay, if they opt out, that's yes. like testing positive. So you lose a third of the season. Right. So if you go out for whatever mm -hmm. later on, and you refuse in the meantime, you you will sit out a third of the season. Right. Because you refuse to take take the test. Right. So there is no opt out. There. But then another something comes along that they hadn't thought of. Well, well they, they, should have stayed stayed in the, they should have stayed in the program. Yep. Okay. Keep their options open. Right. Is there any as long as I think they, they're aware that that is the case, I don't have any. Issue with that, but that's something that they definitely need to go to where once you opt out, 
you can't do anything. Oh, let's just if you refuse a test, yeah. Yeah. if you refuse a test, you can't do another anything extracurricular until you have a test. No, no. If, you you're already positive. Positive. if you refuse, yes. then you it's a positive. It's a positive. Yes, sir, yes. Yeah. So they would get the consequence. They have to serve the consequence in order to participate. Right. But then going down the road, then they can. Then it's then it's okay. Then they can. They're still random. Okay. Okay. How about I follow how it's going. Just yeah. don't use drugs or alcohol. You'll be okay. Don't use the test. So yes. We, we will get. To, if you guys are. If, just one second. If you guys are interested in participating in the discussion, there's cards in the back. You just fill out, give them to Arlene, then when we're done with our discussion, we will open our discussions up with you guys as well. Okay. Um. But there's just all like no cards. Yep. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Um. And uh, maybe I missed this because I did miss this one session um, this discussion. So a student who, and I'm sure this is in our policy, I'm probably just not telling it. So a student who, say, has a, either refuses calling as a positive or has positive and is in multiple activities, let's say three co-curriculars and one athletic, that 33% applies to all of it. Scott, is that right? Scott, can you give us guidance on that, please? I understand. Could you use the microphone? I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. So if I understand your, your question correctly, the, uh, the co-curricular activities are divided into two categories, category one and category two. Category one activities are defined as activities that have a defined season like athletics, the play, forensics, debate. Category two activities are those activities that might meet throughout the course of the school year, student council, AFS, etc. Students who are involved in both category one and category two activities are subject to the penalties of both. However, category one um, has a percentage applied to the sanction, 33% for a first violation. Category two has a um, specific number of weeks, so it's a four-week suspension for a alcohol, tobacco, or drug violation. If that student is involved in three category two activities, then they are out of those three category two activities for four weeks. And the 33%? Correct. Okay. That, that answers my question. Thank Correct. you. Correct. Sure. What if you're between seasons? Does it apply to the next season? Correct. So the next season that you're going to do. Even if it's the next year? For example, a kid just does football? He gets half that 33rd one year because it's the end of the season and half the next. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Could, sure could, serve two, could serve two games in uh, one season and then have to finish the third game up in the next season. Okay. I'm sure that's a rare occurrence. That's where you kind of have to think about it every day. I go ahead. Just to clarify that, that's not a. Uh, Say there are four games left in the season, hypothetically, and there's a three-game suspension. The student or staff has, doesn't have the option that starts right away, so that you can't pick and choose when to, to start. It happens right after the positive, or right after the refusal. Correct. Okay. So then, on that scenario, if it were four games left in the season, hypothetically, and there was a three-game suspension. That suspension will that would occur immediately, either through a test positive or a refusal being treated as a test positive, and it would be those three games, and then the student would be allowed to play that last game if there were four games. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Cooney? We reserve the right to recall the witness. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Um, uh, on page three of of the uh, policy document, it Is talks. The guidelines or the, the I don't know it. It, it it won't open, so okay. I can't <laughs> tell you. Pardon? Yeah, 
Pardon me? Would you like to print this? A printed out copy? Yeah. That would be it's awesome. Fashion. Not on this. Um, yes, on this. Page three here talks about the results kept in a separate file. Um, I assume that that is so that the results of any test aren't on a any sort of a transcript that would be going to a future college. I mean, this one incident by having it be kept in a separate file is it's not going to be on a is not in right. it's intended to not haunt the the young person for the rest of their life going forward. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah, if it's considered a, a medical or a, um, a medical file, which are separate from regular student files and behavioral files. So those files are separate the way it is. Or would this be even more separate if it's <coughs> held in the athletic department? Do you know? Uh, I don't, Dr. Thompson. Okay. okay. But they would, the, the results of this test would be kept separate, separate. completely mm -hmm. separate from any mm -hmm. transcript or anything. Okay. And I have one further question, if I could. Um, assuming we, assuming we go forward with this and assuming we raise a $10 fee, does that get incorporated into the policy at all? Or where do we add that $10 fee in the whole procedure, in the, in the whole that would just be separate. We would have to determine, because we've are actually already approved that um, student fees would stay um, consistent. We weren't increasing, so we'd have to bring that back for board approval if that was the case. Okay, thank you. Sure. I had one uh, on, the drug, on the random drug testing guideline. There was a comment up to 25% of the total number of athletic and co-curricular participants will be tested annually. I think our discussion at one point centered around up to 50 initially, and then we had the, the ability to reduce it should the board determine. I think that's one of the things that we need to iron out as a board of where we want to start. Okay. I don't know how we want to go forward. That was the only other question I had on I guess, that. You know, so. What would be, uh, Dr. Tom, which is the best way to proceed with this? Would you want that kind of information where the board wants to go now, or would you rather kind of take some of the discussion we're having tonight, send it to the attorney for their <laughs> remake, and then bring it back, and then we can kind of fill in the blanks of, you know, maybe and maybe he would have recommendations that you don't want to go this high, or for, for legal reasons, or you know, we're I, I think some of that guidance would be helpful for sure. the board. Um, yes. 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 Yes.
But um, how, so, how do you know what that number is going to be if, again, in September 1st, you don't know how many kids are going to participate maybe for the first time in a co-curricular throughout the whole calendar year? It's a percentage of the sampling that we have. So let's say we have 100 kids signed up and we're going to do 20%. You would have 20 kids that go in that pool. But there's 100 kids in there, we would pull 20, 20, 20 kids randomly for every test if you're doing that. My guess is they'll take our total number of co-curriculars from this year, if we're going to do 10%, let's say, and they'll spread out their days throughout the year to do 100 for one of the kids, if we have 12 But that's my guess. Mm -hmm. I, I would, um, I guess my thought process is just the opposite. I'd rather start with 5 or 10%. Make sure we're doing it right. <laughs> Make sure we give everybody the ability to understand the program, to know what's expected of them, maybe not as a participant, but as a, a observer of other people being tested, and ease into it that way. But that's just my opinion. I was wondering for the policy, why we need to have an upper limit. That kind of just restricts us. Well, the policy may not the procedure you would. Well, also, with the public, that's not doing 100% of the board. That could be another question. Do we have to put a limit on it? Do we just decide annually? See, this all goes to Mr. Strom's. Obviously, there's a reason we have three readings that this is not to work through. So. The good part is we are not a reinventing the wheel on this. We do have two districts that have been doing it successfully for a while, so. If you write successfully, do you mean that they haven't been sued, or how do you define successful? Uh, they've implemented the program, have gotten sued, and they're continually doing it, so I imagine the community feedback has not been negative. Okay. Anything else? We have a card. We did have a card from Mr. Anks, but he left. So we have four weeks. We've got two more readings. I'll have two more shots. Yeah. Um, Just call up the microphone and you can say your name and then you can ask your question. Uh, okay. I'm Clayton Cavanaugh. And um, I'm interested in could you possibly test every would it be a legal issue to test every person in these co-curricular activities? 100% yeah. students? We could be expensive, I guess. Um, and from what we were told from um, the um, uh, woman from Pearl Health that uh, uh, Mr. Kweeke brought in, I think she's one that said better than Mr. Ketterman, but uh, st statistically, if you're trying to do this as a deterrent uh, for, kid, for kids, uh, your the, the deterrent factor of doing a percentage is probably as effective as doing 100 percent, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Why do you have a question? Okay. Well, I was just wondering because um, I don't know. This this testing for drug use has been going on in not only just schools but really any kind of program anywhere, and uh, it's it's interesting to see what's kind of the idea, deterrent, or to kind of see if it's trying to, like, putting people at a disability to other people, possibly. Like, also, like, what kind of drug use are we talking about? What, you know, what are we going to be screening for? Yes. Um, I'm going off the top of my head here, and I may have to recall <laughs> Mr. Cousy for this. It's understandable. <laughs> But it's not restricted to what's on the list. Um, where am I looking at? Oh, I'm sorry. Alcohol. Okay, alcohol, uh, met, uh, metabolic, uh, like nicotine, um, marijuana, opiates, cocaine, and amphetamines, PCP. Those are some of that are listed, but it's not limited to just those. But those are some of the items that are screened. Okay. What about things that would improve performance unfairly? Mr. Kluge, do you remember the answer on that one? I know it's yeah. 
So it's, we're not screening for those. No. Okay. It just I've heard, I've heard stories from people who used to be in high school that they used to <coughs> use these, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's a huge issue. I haven't heard much about it except from them. Um, but maybe I'm just saying it could be useful to. No, put in actually, there. I, mean, I think it's something as technology changes. I think that's something right. that we will definitely address. Yeah, I understand that at this point it's probably not cost effective to test for that, but... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll bring this back for... Uh, we have any other cards? Oh, yeah. No, that was it. Annie's was for the order, earlier one that she spoke about. Okay. Did you want to talk again? Um, no, you're welcome to, oh. but the card just talks about the art. Yeah, I don't waste your time, so... Oh, well, you're not. Feel, feel free. Well, I don't know if everyone... If everyone really feels they kind of have a, an opinion or a good grip on the situation, I don't really see... I don't really have anything else to say unless anyone has any questions about the whole thing. It's just... Ms. McCarthy's room is known as a like a safe place, like I said before. And taking that away would just be devastating to so many kids. Yeah, and, and actually right now we're talking about the drug testing. Um, the um, we will be talking at the upcoming meeting um, about what we're gonna be doing with the weight room in the air room, so that's how we do it. All right, the, yeah, time yeah, so don't that. waste your time. All right, all right, thank you. Thank you. So, anything else we want to give direction on staff on before the next meeting on information that we want, or? Are we comfortable moving at least forward to the next meeting and getting legal opinions on this? Any objection to that? I am. I'm not hearing any objections, so. I don't mind getting legal opinions and, uh, and, and continuing a full discussion about it. Okay. Yeah. We're not asking for your vote today. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I'm not informed enough yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. No, wait, I'm sorry, Mr. Pulski. Did you say it's the next meeting? And what date is that? Um, June 16th. Two weeks from today. All right. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, so moving on to with the agenda. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 Yeah, I'm well, this is I'm sorry, I was waiting for the motion. Um, no, there, there are no changes to this policy. Is there anything that anyone wanted to add? or? I just have a question. Yeah. So the, uh, the vapor or non-prescription inhalant devices, are, is that like in a metal thing that you're holding? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, I only bring it up because I saw someone in their car, and I've never seen that before. <laughs> so it was just, you know, kind of weird. number 1630.01, and 4430.01, second readings. Again, there aren't any changes, Julie, right? We have yep, the FMLA policies. Any questions or feedback? Okay, hearing them. Next item, uh, 6E is budget, standing line. Any questions for Julie or requested updates or specifics? Talk to lunch tonight. Moving on. Uh, number seven, information follow-up. Request for information. Actually, uh, this may be a pro might not be the appropriate place, but right now, 
can we, going forward on our board docs, get all the uh, documentation in PDF format? Um, the, which one was it? I can't remember which one, but it was in .x format, and I don't have all that. So if we can keep it consistent, at least it will open up in the browser. So. Yeah, I did notice that last night. I usually read this stuff in my iPad and everything pops up fine. And I was doing it on a computer at home that didn't, didn't happen to have Office on it. And it just errors out. It's the random drug testing. So. OK. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. I do have it at work, but I don't like to do this at work because I get better too much. Any other information follow-up requests? All right, we'll be on the item nine, vote for closed session. Second. Oh, excuse me. Vote for closed session for Wisconsin statute uh, 19.851C for the purpose of constraining employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of employees for which the board has jurisdiction, jurisdiction specifically for salary increases. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are in closed session. We will be coming out of closed session only for the purposes of adjournment. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you.